Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to today's community chapel, the first of women's first three months of 2023. Today we join in this year's theme and we celebrate women who tell our stories. We turn our larger theme focus from the task of planting seeds to the task of, of tending the soil and soul of community. As we consider those who are engaged in this tending work, specifically in relationship to the care of the unseated soil upon which we seek to fulfill our mission as an institution of theological learning and spiritual and community formation. Today, we lift up the love and labor of the Sigourney K Land Trust. The Sigourney K Land Trust is an urban indigenous woman-led land trust based in the San Francisco Bay Area. It seeks to facilitate the return of indigenous land to indigenous people. Through the practice of rematriation, which means to restore a people to their rightful place in sacred relationship with their ancestral land. This means cultural revitalization and land restoration. The Sigourney K Land Trust calls on native and non-native people alike to heal and transform the legacies of colonization, genocide, and patriarchy. It calls on all of us to do the work that our ancestors and future generations are calling us to do. As we consider the holy land of the Ohlone people, may we find ways to partner with these holy women who are remothering the land and her people back to one another. Welcome and let us worship in the beauty of our holy sacred community. Now let us rise and sing together our opening hymn, Bring Many Names. It's number 10 in your chalice hymnal. Thank you. 
Good morning. The reading we have is When We Breathe Together by Jan Richardson. This is the blessing. We cannot speak by ourselves. This is the blessing we cannot summon by our own devices. Cannot shape to our purpose cannot bend to our will. This is the blessing that comes when we leave behind our aloneness, when we gather together, when we turn toward one another. This is the blessing that blazes among us when we speak the words strange to our ears, when we finally listen into the chaos when we breathe together at last. So we invite you to join with us. You can stay seated. We'll be singing these interludes. Um, the song Standing Stone by Melanie Damore. Very simple, uh, you'll find the lyrics in your bulletin. Let's try it. Words are just simply not make will be your standing stone, I will stand by you. Uh, let's say that together. I will be your standing stone, I will stand by you. You learned the whole song. <laughs> I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. I will be your standing stone. I will stand. This reading is from Luke 10, verses 38 through 42, where Jesus visits Martha and Mary. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat by the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, 
Do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. I say again. I will be This reading is from John chapter 11, verse 20 to 22 and 25 to 27. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. While Mary stayed at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Mm -hmm. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. <clears throat> Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the son of God, the one coming into the world.
Hello. I am swimming in gratitude this morning, filled to overflowing with joy, delight, and gratitude to be here with you today. My name is Michelle Winter, and I'm in the last semester of my Master's in Theological Studies here at PSR. Last month, Black History Month, we considered Seeds and Seeding. This month, Women's Her Story Month, we consider Tending. To tend is to care for. We tend a wound. We tend to seedlings. When we tend, we incline ourselves toward the other in a gentle way, a protective way. Tending is not the same as curing. We don't knit the edges of a wound back together when we tend it. We don't make the seedlings grow when we tend them. Instead, we lean in, we look and listen, we remove perceived impediments to growth, we clean wounds to reduce the harm caused, and we gently improve the conditions for health. We do this lovingly, with faith in the life of the other, hoping for flourishing. Tending combines faith, hope, and love. When we tend a seedling, we bring ourselves close to it so we can give it our attention. And without realizing it, we engage in reciprocal breathing. We inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. And the little plantling inhales carbon dioxide and exhales oxygen. For a few moments of attention, we share breath. When we tend to a fellow human, we share the cadence of breath. Perhaps this is most evident in the way an overwhelmed child seeks out a trusted adult. The distressed child's breathing is erratic. And when enfolded into the arms of a trusted adult, the child calms and they begin to breathe as one. This act of entrainment releases hormones in the body that help us feel belonged. Mm -hmm. Tending is an act of trust in the beautiful spirit of the other. It is not a controlling movement, but a releasing movement. I invite you to close your eyes for just a moment and remember what it feels like to be tended. Perhaps someone cared for you while you were sick. Or someone encouraged you to follow a calling. Or you felt safe leaning against the trunk of a favorite tree. What does it feel like to be tended? Now we will wonder about that same question as we visit with a family in the New Testament. They're a group of siblings, Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. You have probably heard the story many times. There's so much going on here. But we read two stories about these sisters. In the second story, Martha is full of faith. She answers Jesus with words that show that she loves him. In fact, her words to him are a good model for how to talk to God as friend. In her time of deep hurt, she goes to meet him. She tells him how she feels. She doesn't try to hide it or make it pretty. She just comes out and says what we all wonder when we're hurt. Where have you been? Yes. I believe and trust in you, but where? Have you been, Lord? And then I believe you are Christ, the Son of God. That is an authentic relationship. She's open, honest, real. She's holding her grief and disappointment up in front of God's faith, face with faith and hope. 
So with this in mind, let's look at the first story. Perhaps the story of Mary and Martha is not about two choices to work or to sit. Sometimes we read this story as being about whether we should be busy or be still with God. But what if this story is about so much more? What if this story can give us a key to tending to one another? What do we know about Martha now that we've heard both stories? We know she loves God. We know she loves her siblings. She's a good woman. In the first story, we find this woman who loves Jesus and opens her home to him. She invites him in and she loves him in her way. And what is her way? To do for him. Her way to show love is to cook and clean and serve. And you know what? There is nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's a beautiful way to love someone. A few years ago, I broke my foot. I was just struggling to learn to move in a cast when my sister in Arizona called to tell me that my father was in the hospital and she didn't think he would live much longer. When my plane arrived, she picked me up and said, I don't know how we're going to get you back and forth from the house to the hospital every day, but we'll figure something out so that you can have some time with him. And I told her, just take me to the hospital and leave me there. I'll stay with him. That's what she did. And during his last week of life, I slept in the chair next to his bed. I fed him. I listened to him. I talked to him. I held his hand, sang, prayed, and waited, waited with him until he died. After he died, I thought about what a gift my sister had given me. She took care of all the paperwork, the questions. She talked to the doctors and nurses. She made the phone calls and the legal decisions. I told her, thank you. Thank you for letting me just sit with him while you did all that stuff that had to be done. And she said, as soon as I took you into his room, I felt such a relief knowing that you would never leave him until it was over. She said, I could never do what you do. Being present and patient while waiting for someone to die, I'm good at the paperwork and the legal decisions. That's what I do. You gave me a great gift by being willing to stay with him. By allowing each other to love in our own ways, we blessed one another and we blessed my father. I don't think that Jesus was upset with Martha for the way she was showing love. I wonder if instead he was highlighting something else. Have you ever been like Martha, trying to do things for someone, finish projects, fix problems, find solutions, and then suddenly, somehow, the list of ways we're going to show love becomes a list of things to do. Lots of things to do. When that happens to me, I admit that I become resentful at all I have to do. Why won't anyone help me? Why do I have to do it all? How are all of these things suddenly ending up on my list? And why does it seem like my list never gets any shorter? In those times of stress, we look around for some way to make it stop, to relieve our own burdens by placing them on someone else. We look for someone to blame. In those moments, we're tempted to devalue the other. Mm -hmm. What we see in Martha is a personality type. She values doing, working, cooking, cleaning. She thinks as the, of those things as more important or more valuable. But it is neither more nor less important than any other character trait. The gift my sister and I were able to give each other was the gift of seeing each other as different and valuable. We don't always succeed in this, but when we do, our relationship grows. Martha wanted to show Jesus how much she loved him by doing for him. And part of what she's suddenly feeling is panic at the possibility that she might fail. She has something to prove. She wants to show that she's valuable, worth his attention. I imagine Christ's voice is tender when he speaks to her. He says her name gently, Martha. Martha. And I hear him saying my name, Michelle, Michelle. She is already valued. And in God's economy, value is not comparative. Value is not comparative. She is free to love however she wants, 
But the important thing is to also allow her sister to love in her own way. In this story, the difference between the sisters is that Mary doesn't require Martha to stop what she's doing and come and sit down. <laughs> she gives her sister the freedom to be herself. And this is the better part, the choice that Jesus commends. It is to stop trying so hard to control everything and everyone and to rest in the delightful difference of the other, a releasing movement. And we need Martha, but her offering stopped being about tending to the needs of others when it became a controlling movement. Uh, what could it have looked like for the people in that space to tend one another, to breathe together? What if Martha had raised her head in frustration, noticed her sister sitting with Jesus, and paused long enough to realize that this was a unique opportunity for her sister? What if Martha in that moment had tended to what was growing in Mary? What if Martha had taken a deep breath, made peace with a less than perfect meal and pruned her menu and allowed herself to participate in the joy of what was happening in that room? We are designed to flourish when we connect with and invest in one another. It takes more courage to love than to correct. Ooh, Jesus. Love is inviting someone to come into my space as they are and trust that God is already part of this story in ways only he can see. This is such an important part of Mary and Martha's story. When Jesus tells Martha that Mary has chosen the better part, he is helping Martha to learn to let go of her fears around significance. It's a releasing movement. And Martha learned this lesson. We know because we see her again, a person of deep faith and trust outside the tomb of her brother, believing that God has a plan and trusting even when she can't understand. So what does it feel like to be tended? Oh, beloved. It feels like being seen, being heard, being valued, and being allowed to grow into our dreams. May we listen one another into existence. May we love one another into freedom. May we tend one another into flourishing. Thank you. Now we're going to take a moment and ponder a question. Can you allow the Holy Spirit to bring to mind someone who needs a little tending from you this week? Whose dreams might you encourage? Whose being could you affirm? And so I invite you to ponder how you could tend another while we listen to this beautiful rendition of Psalm 23.
I wonder if now that you have allowed a, a name to bubble up before you, someone that you could tend, if you might like to send them a text, mm -hmm. I wonder if you would like to write their name down or write a note to yourself to remind you to connect or if you'd like to turn to your pew mate your seat mate and share that but i would love for this to be a moment when you reach beyond the theoretical and touch someone who needs you mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for coming to chapel. I'm Reverend Yolanda. And I, I think I want to stand over here. Okay. So we have the work of the people, community announcements. So welcome to chapel and as we celebrate Women's Hershey Month. Thank you so much, Michelle, for those wonderful words.
All righty. So for the rest of Women's First Three Months for our chapel services, next Tuesday on March the 14th, we have Mahoma Howard who will be preaching. Mm -hmm. And on Tuesday, March the 21st, we will have Minister Sanria Sam preaching. So please make sure to either come in person or tune in at 11 and 10. It will be wonderful. We always look forward to seeing everyone in person and online. All right. And one of our other announcements is the United Methodist Student Gathering on March the 8th. That's tomorrow at 2 p.m. Featuring Reverend David Niu, United Methodist Central Valley District Superintendent. And the contact person is Reverend Michael Yoshi, who's here in attendance. And if you go online, there's his uh, contact information should be up there on the screen to uh, RSVP. And then on March 9th at 9.30 a.m., right here in the Bodley Museum Lecture Series, it's called um, it's online? Oh, it's going to be online. Okay. Oh, you can still come in here and watch it if you want to. Be involved. <laughs> Use the free Wi-Fi. <laughs> okay, so this lecture is called Tattooed Women, Bess and the Marsh, Connecting Tattooed Bodies and Figurines at Deir El Medina, Egypt. And the speaker will be Dr. Ann Austin, that sounds wonderful. I wish I could attend, but I have a class. Created on YouTube as well. Oh, okay, wonderful. You can watch it later. Then I can watch it on there. That would be wonderful. All right. And then we have on Wednesday, March the 15th, Nurturing Life, Self-Care and Soul Care, presented by our campus pastor, Kamal Hassan, sponsored by the Office of Community Life. That would be Reverend Ann. So Wednesday, March the 15th, 2023, from 12 noon until 1.30 p.m. It is via Zoom, and you can register in advance. Uh-oh, puppy's coughing. <laughs> okay. And then for um, our Memorial Garden for Ismaeli Mata'afa with the Community Garden Update. And the Ismaeli Mata'afa Community Garden hours are open to the entire PSR community. We tend to the garden regularly and welcome anyone to come and support us during these designated times. The weekly Community Garden hours are Tuesday, 1 to 4 p.m. today and Friday, 9.30 a.m. until 12 noon. And you can contact our wonderful Manny here. And his email should be up there on the screen for you. And I just love this picture with those beautiful smiling faces. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and also for the PSR students, um, this is regarding the Ignite Collective. We want to get more students on this platform. There's lots of good information on there. We have the PSR Community Life and also the Sanctuary, and there are other cohort groups that are on the website. So if you will be if you will be entered into an Office of Community Life raffle for bookshop.org gift certificates, yeah, yeah free stuff. So we need people to sign up. There's the QR code that you can capture with your phone if you like. You can go to um, the Ignite website and sign up. There's lots of uh, updates happening, the events pages on under each group. So please join us on the Ignite website. Let's see what other interesting things are going on. Oh, Daylight Savings Time is coming up this Sunday. This, this is not the one we, we fall back. This one we got to go forward. So make sure you set your clock so you're not an hour late anywhere. Okay. Let's see. 
I think that's all that I have. Is there anyone else who would like to announce something? Uh, Hi, uh, Lahoma Online. I just wanted to uh, mention last week I uh, I posted a link to an event, a speaking event with Judy Human that was supposed to happen on Wednesday. Um, and I don't know if any of you signed up. I got an email on Tuesday saying that it was being rescheduled and um, and actually Judy Human passed away on Thursday. She was in the hospital after having had a heart attack apparently. Um, so just, you know, I'm sorry that we are not able to uh, witness with Judy um, and just pray for her and her family and her loved ones. It's a big blow for people in the disability community. Thank you, Lahoma, for that update. We will keep her and her family in our prayers. Um, I just wanted to encourage everyone to um, fill out our newest Progressive Voices of Faith survey. Uh, this month, it is what does it mean to create a world where all can thrive, which I think everyone knows is the mission of PSR. Um, you should see it in Thursdays on the Vine, but I'll also email it out to everyone um, after chapel. Uh, and it's a really important opportunity for faculty, students, um, and alumni to be in conversation with each other um, about issues, but especially this month, what it means to create a world where all can thrive. Thank you. Yeah. Um, lots of people on the office. They hear you. They hear you better. They won't hear you. Yeah. Um, people. There's a lot of things going on in the Office of Academic Affairs, just an update, especially in the Office of the Registrar. So we have, after the spring break, we're going to start doing mid-semester reviews, and I will update um, and send emails to faculty. We are prepping graduation, and I'm trying really hard to finalize all my graduates by this week. So you'll get um, communication from me as well. Mm -hmm. And then registration folks happen all over again in April. So lots of messaging coming from me. Um, as always, I encourage everybody to email me, call me, I don't know, grab me um, if you have any questions. And I am always happy to help. Okay. Thank you. Oh, and uh, just a reminder to please fill out our sign up sheet so that you can receive information about chapel and also uh, the link to the survey. If you could please fill out those surveys, we would really appreciate it. That will help us to continue to have chapel in a way that works for everyone. Is there anyone else? We have some guests too in the house. Go ahead, Mary. Kimberly. We've been having a, a student um, online cafe on Mondays. It, it's happening three to four uh, p.m. PST, and we I send re a reminder, and uh, Miss Ann kindly um, sends it to the entire student network um, on, on day of. So look out for that link, and maybe some of the topics that we can discuss is come, coming from you know how we can thrive. Um, some of the things that we've discussed uh, thus far are wounded healer. Um, chaplaincy, um, uh, ministry, and, and beyond. Uh, we've also talked about our certain joys in our academic life. So it is student-led, and there is a sign-in sheet for, for anyone in, that is interested to host that one hour and to speak on a topic that they, that they want to discuss. Um, and also, we, we do check-ins, and we also do centering activities as a, as a, a base um, uh, uh, meeting guidelines for all of us. So please look out for that on next Monday. Thank you. Would you introduce our guest? Um, we are going to be visiting. She's an admitted uh, MD student who will be joining us as well. So, if that's going to be her, All right, again, to online. Welcome to the student. These are in the DMED program. And I want to 
process of considering returning to the program. I can step back for a little bit. But so you serve as vice president of the DEI and uh, Anyone else? Okay, that's the end of our announcements. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and that's horizon and when we are uh, sending songs we will be the way. With this blessed blessing from John Jackson, a blessed blessing of the ordinary. Let these words lay themselves like a blessed blessing upon your head, your shoulders, as if like hands they could pass on to you what you most need for this day, as if they could anoint you, not merely for the path ahead, but for this ordinary moment that opens itself to you. Opens itself like another hand that unfurls itself, that reaches out to gather up these words in the bowl of its palm. You may think this blessing lives within these words, but I tell you, it lives in the opening and in the reaching. It lives in the ache where this blessing begins. It lives in the hollow made by the place where the hands of this blessing meet. Blessings poured out on you this day. Have a good week. Well, uh, Thank you.